Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing some of my uh, learnings that I have compiled from the Buddha's discourses on old age. Uh, the link to the uh, text version of the discourses, it is available. The link to my blog where I have uh, put, put out the text version along with the references to the uh, respective sutras, that will be available in the description, so you can check that. Right. So, let us start. Uh, what Buddha says on the old age and aging and things like that. So first what I found was uh, Buddha's teaching on the five remembrances. Buddha, So I have made a separate video on the five remembrances. You can check that video where I have shared uh, what uh, the five remembrances that every householder Buddha wants that should every householder should reflect and think daily on five things. So one of the things uh, is uh, old age. Right. So I'm just reproducing the ex excerpt of that particular sutra. So Buddha says, because there are these five themes that should often be reflected upon by a woman or a man, by a householder or one gone forth. That means by everyone, not only a householder, but everyone. What five? And one of the one of the five is I, th I think the second one is Buddha says a woman or a man, a householder or one gone forth should often reflect thus. I am subject to old age. I am not exempt from old age. Then Buddha says, for what, for the sake of what benefit should, a, so Buddha says, what is the benefit of that? So Buddha says, for the sake of what benefit should a woman or man, a householder or one gone forth, often reflect this, I am subject to old age and not exempt from old age. So Buddha gives the answer to this. Buddha says, in their youth, beings are intoxicated with their youth. And when they are intoxicated with their youth, they in, engage in misconduct by body, speech and mind. But when one reflects upon this theme, the intoxication with youth is either completely abandoned or diminished. It is for the sake of this benefit that a woman or man, a householder or one gone forth should often reflect thus, I am subject to old age, I am not exempt from old age. So the understanding that I get from this particular discourse is, Buddha wants to keep us grounded. right? So especially this is uh, oriented towards youth, you know, people who are young. So, for example, I'm just thinking about my own journey, like I was in the 20s and 30s. We never even cared about, you know, thought about, you know, spiritual paths, spirituality, all those things. And we were like enjoying our life. And yes, I came into spirituality at the age of 24 uh, because of certain situations, the suffering became too much. But then Buddha says that in our young age, in our youth, there are too many, you know, things that excite us, too many material objects. But when we reflect on the old age, we, that whole, you know, excitement, you know, we can control that excitement. We can, because our mind is totally into sense pleasures. So when we reflect that it's not pessimistic, Buddha is never pessimistic. Buddha is realistic that this is where I am moving through. This is the, my nature. One day I will become old. One day my body will, all the wrinkles and all the diseases and everything will happen. So Buddha wants us to be grounded. And then when we are grounded, we, we start to know that, you know, what uh, our priority should be, right? Because now that we are moving towards death, right, every second, every moment, every day we are moving towards death. And in the intoxication of the youth and the sense pleasures, we somehow forget that reality. So Buddha is reminding us that this is one of the five remembrances. You can check my detailed video on the five remembrances to get a complete gist of this thing. Right? So this is where one of the things where I found Buddha said about the old age. Second, uh, uh, Buddha says nature of this body to age and die. Now here I am just reproducing. So uh, Buddha's, I think, uh, Ananda, Ananda, Buddha's uh, disciple Ananda said, uh, Buddha's disciple Ananda said about Buddha only, he said that it's incredible, sir. It's amazing how the complexion of your skin is no longer pure and bright. Your limbs are flaccid and wrinkled and your body is stopped stooped and it's stooped means just bent and it's apparent that there has been a deterioration in your faculties of eye ear nose tongue and body right now ananda is saying this very real fact about the because ananda has seen buddha he is the closest disciple of buddha and he has seen buddha right from his you know childhood very early in his life so now he is you know he, he is not kind of criticizing buddha or he is not kind of you know making fun of buddha he will never will right he will. He is basically just seeing the reality of how he is seeing Buddha. You know, we we tell our parents also that you know you are getting old. 
we ourselves never think that we are getting old but we tell others that you are getting old to our friends and all we tell them but when sometimes when we see our face in the mirror we know that yes we are getting old right so so buddha says look at what buddha says buddha says that's how it is anand right so buddha is saying this is how it is right we cannot so basically my i'm just sharing my reflection this we cannot fight with this very thing that my body is getting old buddha says when young you are liable to go, grow old when healthy you are liable to get sick and when alive you are liable to die the complexion of the skin is no longer pure and bright the limbs are flaccid and wrinkled and the body is stooped and it's apparent that there has been deterioration in the faculties of eye ear nose tongue and body so buddha is repeating what ananda is saying that yes this is how it is and then the holy the holy teacher our teacher buddha says curse this wretched old age which makes you so ugly that's how much this delightful puppet is ground down by old age even if you live for 100 years you will still end up dying death spares no one but crushes all underfoot so buddha is talking about the reality of death and old age so buddha says at that in the entire life we adorn this body we take care of this body through perfumes through you know lot of things you know we use all these things you know creams and all these things and we use all the protection the sunscreens and everything to keep our body in good shape but we do not pay attention to our mind this body is one day going to die so buddha says what will continue with us is our karmas right whatever we have our deeds will only go with us they are only our true friends this body and everything but we what we do we do the opposite we take care of this puppet this body in so much and we ignore the mind our mental defilements we do not take care right so buddha is saying curse this wretched old age which makes you so ugly that's how this delightful puppet is ground down by old age right you'll still end up dying death spares no one so they, they you know you can be a you know a whatever caste creed religion death is going is the biggest leveler right death spares no one there is as of now that we speak there is no such technology that can you know uh, uh you know make one free from death right so we all are going to die right but precious all underfoot right so that is one discourse that i found then i found a discourse where uh, it's on how to know that a noble one has come to the true teaching right so uh, so there is always this question that okay i am studying i am practicing but how do i come to know so now my age is also approaching right so maybe i am 42 right now maybe when i am 50 when i am 55 i'll have this question that i am practicing for so many years what is happening am i growing right this doubts you know this spiritual question comes in us that what is is i am spiritually progressing or not so buddha answers this that buddha says a noble disciple understands old age and death i think this is said by sariputra uh, one of the arihants uh, disciples of buddha a noble disciple understands old age and death their origin their cessation and the practice that leads to their cessation but what are old age and death what is their origin cessation and practice that leads to to the cessation the old age de- de- decrepitude broken teeth gray hair wrinkly skin diminished vitality and the falling faculties or the various sentient beings in the various orders of sentient beings right and what is death old age and death originate from rebirth old age and death ceases when rebirth ceases the practice that leads to cessation of old age and death is simply the noble, noble eightfold path so buddha says what is old age all the physical manifestations of our you know so buddha very, was very clear that you know old age is of the body not of the mind so you can and i'll come to that particular discourse later on in this video is buddha said that the body will be of doing old age but not the mind right so old age what do you qualify by old age what buddha meant by old age is all the wrinkles and you know body becomes stooped and everything right and uh, buddha says what is death old age and death originate from rebirth so this whole cycle of rebirth continuance birth death so the moment i am reborn the moment there is a rebirth there is a death also so in the rebirth there is death so what thiknat han the buddhist monk says the his teaching on the interbeing everything contains within it everything so success contains failure within it failure contains success within it birth contains death within it birth contains old age within it old age contains birth within it 
so everything so when we are born we are actually we have also died at the same time right in our birth there is death also right so i know this is a bit of a deep concept but every moment we are we are we are, born, we are born dying our minds we think that we have a separate self and abhinav is like person who lives for 50 60 70 years no my mind is generating and dying generating and dying every moment but i am not i don't have that faculty that deep faculty no to know that my mind is you know creating and dying at the same time every moment yes i am practicing insight meditation so maybe very soon one day i will get that faculty to wish to to envision my mind growing and dying at the same time right so we don't have to attach ourselves to our body that attachment of ourselves as a separate self to our body these are all wrong views we have to just witness this changing nature of things that our my body is completely changing so when i am seeing that i am denigrating i am degenerating and the objects which are outside me they are also denigrating degenerating then where is the question of being attached then if even after that even having that after having that right view if i get attached then i am just creating my own suffering but if my that right view is well established in me then i will not create suf- craving for anything because the ignorance has gone from me and that once that ignorance goes that is nirvan once that ignorance completely vanishes then I, and totally that understanding right view is established then that is nirvan nirvan is not something like you know i am just out of this planet or something right it's right here right now i am liberated that is all we are all aspiring to go right if you are on buddha's path buddha's path was very clear from this point wherever you are with your mental latent defilements you are there to that state of pure being that nirvan we are all moving towards that path and what is the path the path is the noble eightfold path right speech right action right thinking that is the path that we need to follow right okay then another uh, 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 co- another uh, discourse i came across it's a small four liner uh, kind of a poem seek the light so it is said what is joy what is laughter when the flames are ever burning shrouded by darkness would you not seek a light right so what my understanding here is that when the flames are burning when everything is good when youth when you are young and everything then all the joy and the laughter is you know you don't even care for it you you are just immersed in all the sensual pleasures but once your body's light starts to you know reduce would you not seek a light then you start seeking seeking the light you know when we are young and everything everything around us is like all you know hunky dory and all you know uh, illuminated but when our body's light reduces then we should you know at least start seeking the light and what is the light that we are going to seek is the light of wisdom the buddha's teaching so at least so my my understanding of this is like this it, there may be a different understanding okay in the youth you would not have paid that much attention to the spiritual teachings of the buddha but now that your own light is getting decreased and you are in the fag end of your life start seeking the light there is see for a person who is young they definitely see everyone has to move towards the goal of liberation but for a person who is young maybe he has a term lot lot more time left but a person who is old that person has to hustle much more because he doesn't know when the death will come death can come to anyone any time but for an old person imperative to have that urgency to seek the light so that is my interpretation okay how to practice when you get old okay this is a very good thing uh, all these links all the links to these sutras they are available if you go in the description there is a i will post the link to my blog my website where the uh, the text of these excerpts along with the links will be available so you can check the detailed discourses if you want to okay how to practice when you get old okay uh, buddha uh, buddha advises householder nakula's father he Uh, buddha so householder nakula's father buddha uh, went there and he asked the father asked him that i am getting frail 
I am getting old. How should I practice now that I am getting old? Buddha says, train like this. Though my body is ailing, my mind will be healthy. That's how you should train. Right? Body and mind are different things. Even so, my body is ailing. That doesn't mean that I will not work on my mind. The real work has to be done is in the mind. The body is where? Body is within the mind. It's not that the mind is in the body. Body is in the mind. Since body is just a vehicle for carrying our consciousness for that time for extinguishment of our karmas and everything. When that body is no longer you know, sufficient to uh, do the work, the karmic work, this body will just die and we, our mind with all its karmic defilements and everything will proceed to the next journey. So, allow the body to kind of, uh, you know, uh, wither. Be mindful of the body. Now, mindfulness of the body is, is one of the four factors, four foundations of mindfulness, which is contained in the Satipatthana Sutra, which is directly leading to liberation. Even if you are only and only mindful of your body, the in and out of the breath, the sitting, the, the sensations, right? That's it. Path to liberation is very, very clear, right? So, Buddha, say, Buddha is saying, though my body is ailing, my mind will be healthy. That, that's how you should train. So, Sariputra, so Sariputra said, Sariputra was accompanying uh, the Nakula's father. So, Sariputra said uh, uh, to Nakula's father, didn't you feel the need to ask the Buddha the further question, Sir, how do you define someone ailing in the body and ailing in the mind and someone ailing in the body and healthy in the mind? That means, Sariputra was like goading uh, that uh, 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 Nakula that you should have asked that also. You, the enlightened master is before you. You could have asked that also. So, so, so Buddha, so Nakula's father asked that on the assistance of Sariputra. So, Nakula said, Nakula's father said, and how is the person ailing in body and ailing in mind? So, Buddha says, it's when an unlearned ordinary person has not seen the noble ones, is neither skilled nor trained in the qualities of the noble one, they have not seen true persons, and are neither skilled and trained in the qualities of true person. They regard form as self. Self as form, form in self and self in form. They are obsessed with the thought, I am form, form is mine. But this form of their decays, but this form of theirs decays and perishes, which gives rise to sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress. Right? So Buddha is basically saying that ailing in the body is one thing, all the wrinkles and all. But ailing in the mind is the person who has a wrong view, <coughs> who thinks that this is my form, this is my self. This is because non-self is one of the core teachings of the Buddha, right? And all the meditation and all practices should lead us to the right wisdom, to the understanding of the non-self. So Buddha says, healing in mind is a person who thinks of that himself as a, as a, that I am this form, I am this self, who has not seen the noble one, who has not gone through the teachings of the noble ones, who is not, you know, developed in himself the qualities, that is a person healing in the mind. And, so your body may be ailing, but you can do all these things. You can hear dharma talks, you can read the dharma teachings to the extent possible. You can have this view in you that this is all impermanent. All that you can, you can meditate in all the difficulties that you have of the old age. You can still meditate. So that's there lies the difference. All the, all the problems of our body, we can still follow the path, the noble eightfold path, right? Okay, okay. Then there is this, I think it's the last, no, there is two more. So, you are never too old to reach the Dharma. This is a verse of a senior nun, Sona, who says, and I will just read the text. I gave birth to ten sons in this form, this bag of bones. Then when feeble and old, I approached a nun. She taught me the Dhamma, the aggregates, the sense fields, the elements. When I heard her teaching, I shaved off my head and went forth. When I was a trainee nun, my clairvoyance were clarified and I knew my past lives the places I used to live, I meditate on the signless, my mind unified and serene, I achieved the immediate liberation, extinguished by not grasping. The five aggregates are fully understood. They remain, but their root is cut. Curse you, wretched old age. Now there will be no more future lives. So this is so brilliant. So that nun is saying that I had all the, I had 10, ten sons and I was like a bag of bones until I went to a nun who gave me the teaching of dharma, now I am purified. I meditated on the signless. I know about the five aggregates, but I am cut off. The root of the, 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 the five aggregates is cut off in me. Right? So, so she is like saying that 
we are never old to to understand that and last she says curse you the rest old age now there will be no future lives now now that i am enlightened there will be no future lives right so there is we are never too old to practice the dharma right just come in the teaching and start practicing the teaching okay last one uh, buddha's advice to two aging brahmins so there are two aging brahmins who had come to the buddha and uh, they said that we brahmins master gautama are old elderly and senior we are advanced in years and have reached the final stages of life we are 120 years old and we haven't done what is good so they they accepted and acknowledged the fact that we have not done what should have been done what is good and skillful nor we have made a shelter from fear advise us master gautama instruct us it will be for our lasting welfare and happiness so buddha says indeed brahmins you are old elderly and senior and you haven't done what is good and skillful this world is led on by old age sickness and death but restrained here by way of body speech and mind is a shelter protection island refuge and haven for the departed that means whatever life that you have remaining practice restraint on your body do not do any unskillful actions through the body practice restraint on your mind do not think unskillful thoughts right practice restraint on your speech do not say any harsh word this is basically practicing the noble eightfold path or practicing the five precepts so buddha says whatever life is remaining practice this so there is just the quote buddha says this life so very short is led onward there is no shelter for someone who has been led on by old age no shelter seeing so you are just we are all moving towards death there is no shelter seeing this peril in death you should do good deeds that bring happiness do good deeds that bring happiness the restraint practice here of body speech and mind leads the departed to happiness to the good deeds done while living right so this is the discourses i hope uh, uh, my sharing has helped you you know get some reflection do share your reflection in the comment section and uh, let us move forward together in this path so do share your thoughts comments reflections on uh, uh, in the comment section do also suggest me if you you know if you like this approach in which i am sharing or do you do you suggest any changes in my approach right and uh, thank you so much for watching uh, this video thank you so much namo buddhaya namo buddhaya